Some cathedrals towered up to 14 storeys high. Without the benefit of the modern hoist, just lifting the huge blocks of stone to the top would have presented massive problems for the masons. As a result, they had to develop state-of-the-art lifting machinery. Imagine what it would be like walking mile after mile after mile after mile after mile and getting absolutely nowhere. Well, that's what it would have been like for the poor workers trapped inside that. Which brings me to my next worst job, the treadmill worker. I've travelled all the way to Normandy in France to see this replica, which has been designed using medieval illustrations as a guide. It was the treadmill that provided the power for the medieval crane. So if you were the one doing the treading, it was a pretty menial task, but it was crucially important. The medieval crane builders had two alternatives. They could either build a small wheel, which was pulled around from the outside, or else they could make a much bigger wheel, which was powered by two people inside. The bigger wheels could lift the larger loads, but this was new technology. The cranes were really experimental, and there was always the danger that they might collapse. So working inside that wheel could be really dangerous. The treadmill workers were the unwitting guinea pigs at the centre of a technological marvel. The cranes were built by trial and error, often breaking and killing people, then being modified and rebuilt. But they must have been pretty effective, or the buildings wouldn't have been possible at all. Medieval illustrations seem to suggest that the crane was actually lifted onto the top of the cathedral as it was being built. So the craftsman must have had some sort of way of lifting the crane up in pieces, maybe using smaller cranes or possibly a windlass. Here at Armby, you can see that the walls are absolutely peppered with these little holes, which would have been for scaffolding. So as the walls got higher, so the scaff went higher, and the crane went up and up and up, until it was right on the very top of the cathedral itself. This was technology that had been around since the Greeks and the Romans, but it had been completely lost in Western Europe until the Normans and the French went over to Constantinople and brought it back. In fact, it was these machines alone that enabled the great medieval cathedrals to be built, because they were the only way that people at that time had of lifting massive blocks of stone the size of a car. And in fact, it's this car that we're going to lift. Michel, Frank, Ellie. How does this work? Uh, this crane works very easily, uh, you know, it's, uh, the rope is driving by the big wheels, but the rope is attached to the axle of the wheels. The way the crane works is pretty simple. The rope is attached to the axle in the middle of the treadmill, and in order to lift the car just one metre, the axle has to turn at least two or three times. Because the diameter of the treadmill is so much greater, the amount of effort you have to put in to get the car to budge is spread out over a longer distance. It's like using a low gear to pedal a bike uphill. These guys are almost ready. Should we get in? Yes. Are you ready, guys? Michael and Frank, you can go in the car. They're going to get in while it goes up. And be able to take that weight as well? Yeah, all easily. This crane can take twice weight than we have actually, you know. We can take two tons. Oh, yeah, easy. Which way? This way? OK, to lift, we go this way. Right. We don't have to rush, you know. Yeah. Working slowly, we'll do the job anyway. Oh, it's going now. Look, it's really going up now. Who are the people who would have been doing this treading? Uh, most of the time, they use blind people. people. Blind people? Yes. Why was that? To secure the whole process, because if you turn inside too much, you will feel some kind of attraction for the emptiness. You mean that if you're blind, you don't look down 300 right. foot and see the terrible fall that awaits you? Right. That was very sympathetic of them, wasn't it? Yeah, it was one way to... Uh, they can serve the community. Do you think they, they were... was working for God, you know, building cathedrals. Do you think they worked barefoot? Oh, yes, because they didn't have shoes at the time. It's going up now, isn't it? Look at that. See? You can feel the tug. You can feel there's more weight on it now, but yeah. it's not too difficult. Whoa. Should we stop now? So we turn around and put them down again? No, I've got the rope <laughs> faster. Oh, this is no problem. Yeah, slowly. Oh. 
Ah, we stop. A small problem here. Everything seemed so safe and easy until this apparently solid machine suddenly began to come apart at the axle. So th the axle comes out and yes. the wheel and we can go drops down out. to the 30 meter down. I suddenly got an inkling of what being a treadmill worker must have been like. Imagine being 200 foot up in the air and blind and suddenly realizing things are starting to fall apart. This all may seem pretty safe, like a couple of hamsters going around in a wheel, but when you're in here, it doesn't feel like that at all. You have no control over this thing. You can't just stop it and break it, and you can't just put your hand out to stop it either, because you're frightened that as it whips past one of these things, it's going to slice your fingers off. And when you try to bring it to a halt, the damn thing just keeps moving and moving and moving, and it's wet, and it's slippy. So. When it's just going along fine, well, that's just like you're on holiday, but as soon as there's a problem... Is it OK now? Yeah, now it's pretty safe. We can finish the jobs. OK, let's get no down. no problems. We're going down that way. Yeah, I'm keeping my hands in my pockets After now. you, gentlemen. <laughs> I feel really nervous now. <laughs> really? I can hear the creaking on my left oh, ear. No, come on. <laughs> OK. It's the safest machine we have ever made, but we made only one. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs>